Um, during operation, you're going to see flashing green lights, 10 second caps, producing power and communicating with the ECU. The ECU is our gateway. That is the device that's talking to the inverters every five minutes. So the nice thing about this is when you see the flashing green, green is good. And you know if it's flashing every 10 seconds that it's communicating with the ECU. If it's flashing every two seconds, you know that the flashing green, you know that it's producing power, but it's not talking to the gateway. This right here means that there's some kind of communication issue. So the good news is you're able to see that it's producing power. For some reason, it's not talking to the ECU. Uh, and we'll talk more about communication protocol and how to fix that going forward. Um, flashing red right here. This is a really great example. So if there's some condition that's not met, whether it's the AC parameters, maybe it's the DC input, uh, maybe there's no AC on the site at all, uh, it will actually flash red. Uh, this will actually indicate to you that the, the inverter is not working. Um, and then solid red, solid red is a ground fault protection. If there's anything on the site, there's any kind of ground fault, this will actually go into what we call self-protection mode. Um, and it will have to be cleared. Basically, the clearing can happen on site with the mobile phone app, or it can be done remotely as long as the gateway is set up uh, on the internet so we can send a remote command. You or AP Systems can send that command. All right, so let's dig into some of the tools. What well, is this section right here? I just like to add this in here. These are some of the tools, these are some of the go-to tools that I have in my go bag. Uh, whenever I get a call and I need to get out in the field and do some troubleshooting, these are what's in my bag. I open my bag up and these are the things that I rely on every single day uh, to help me get through a day and help me help solve problems for you guys. First one right here. Again, doesn't have to be the same brand. Um, I, I just happen to have this one and I absolutely love it. And the reason that I love it is one number one is this thing called they call True Sight. Uh, what's nice about it, it has this uh, extra display on the bottom of the device. So if I'm underneath the module, I'm trying to get a DC measurement um, and I can't see the display that's on the face of the device, I can see the display on the end. Super helpful uh, for any of those tight spaces that we all work in. Um, it's amazing. Most important part of this meter here is the DC, oops, I'm sorry, DC current meter right here. Almost every single meter in the world is gonna have AC and DC volt meter. Uh, it's surprising to me how many installers out there that are in the field do not have a DC current meter with them. This is actually very, very important to be able to test the, the, the current coming off of the module into the inverter. Um, it's also important to be able to test a module by itself. You can do voltage checks, you can do current checks. So having that DC current meter is really critical. Um, <clears throat> and this one actually comes with a frequency measurement as well. So if there's any kind of cases where you think Something's wrong. If you're looking at the online portal, you're seeing that the DC voltage is running, frequency is off. You can actually verify that with this particular meter. Very fantastic meter. It can be picked up just about anywhere on many of your electrical supply stores. Again, it's ideal, um, but you can pick up whatever brand you want. Uh, most critical features, like I said before, is this, this tight sight, this being able to see it under the modules, having the DC current meter, and this, this, this clamp on meter right here is amazing. Another great tool that I use, uh, this is actually great for finding uh, modules that aren't working or inverters that aren't working properly. Let's say for example, you know, you, you, you make your map. Maybe the map's not accurate, or maybe you're doing service work for another person's job. You don't have a map. You don't know where inverters are. This right here, again, so it is a, it, it's not brand specific. It could be anything you want it to be. Any one of these thermo thermo thermometers will work. Um, this is the one I just happen to have, the Klein tools. Uh, quick and cheap, right? This can be purchased at Home Depot. I think it's under $30. Uh, I, I make a joke here perfectly. We, we map all of our inverters perfectly, right? And that's not true. Uh, I think we try to do our best, but at the same time, trying to find something that's not working. The nice thing about this particular device is a constant update sensor. You're actually able to press the trigger here, walk along the modules, walk, walk along your modules as you're walking. You're gonna be able to pick out the modules that are not working by the temperature that is higher. So if you're walking along your array and you're looking for an inverter module or inverter that is not working or not producing, let's say, for example, I'm just going to make up numbers here. Uh, you're on the roof, full sun, the module is sitting there. The face of that module is what you're, what you're looking at temperature of. Face of the module is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. You walk to the next one. It's 105, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. 
You move to the next one, it's 102 degrees Fahrenheit. You move to the next module, and it's 115 degrees. Boom, there you go. You found the one that is not operating. Guarantee there is no current. So the nice thing about troubleshooting modules and troubleshooting where inverters are located is the module that has the higher temperature is the one that is not working. Um, it has to be significantly higher. So, I mean, I think you're looking at 100 to 101, that's just noise. But 100 to 115, that's a significant jump. And that right there will indicate to you which, which module and or inverter is not working. Great way to be able to find a, an inoperable module or inverter quickly and cheaply. I said $30 of Home Depot. The next tool that I have in my bag, again, this is a must. Uh, you're on a site, let's say you wanna be able to operate or turn on our gateway or ECU. Uh, this right here is actually able to give you power in your truck. Uh, you plug this into a cigarette lighter, you can charge your laptop, you can turn on your ECU, you can do programming, you can do everything you need to do right there, right in your truck at, the, at that time. Very, very valuable device. Again, this device is $20. Um, it saved me so many times. It has a, a USB port for charging your phone as well. So because the phone is such a critical piece of an installation these days, uh, it's important to have your phone charged, being able to have the laptop if you need it, uh, turn on the ECU. If the home, homeowner does not home, then there's no external uh, power for you to plug into. Um, I, I thought for once, you know, I went to many houses that didn't have power on the outside of the house. Uh, strange, but true. So this device right here has really saved me. Um, frustration uh, and being able to actually get things charged and turn on the ECU. This device, another lifesaver right here. This right here is what we call the Klein Tools Land Scout Junior. Again, could be any particular product, but the nice thing about this is being able to test cables. Uh, you're able to test cables and you're actually able to tone cables. Uh, one thing that I always recommend is using the ethernet port um, on your, either on your router uh, in your house wiring, whatever. Um, we always talk about reliability of the modules. We talk about reliability of the inverters, but we never talk about reliability of the internet connection. This device right here gives you the ability to actually easily, quickly test uh, cables that are already pre-made uh, or test cables that you just made. Uh, this right here is gonna give you the ability to connect our device, our gateway to the homeowner's router um, and verify that all the connections are made. You have good cables, uh, super fast, and again, like I said, testing the cable and actually toning out cables that may be already existing in the wire, in the walls. This one may seem like a silly one, but I've been on many cases where I've needed a, a screwdriver, and this one right here, the Klein 1101, is a classic. Uh, one that you should, everyone should have in their bag, again, doesn't have to be Klein, but Klein is, it makes the best electrical tools in the market. Um, again, I've been to many sites where I needed uh, a nut driver, boom, it's available. And just Phillips, boom, it's available. Uh, square tips for breakers, uh, any kind of troubleshooting, this right here is a great tool. Again, very cheap, Home Depot, $15 and you're done. Non-contact voltage sensors. This right here is nice for chasing. Um, a lot of customers call up and say, hey, I got, I got a system, it's not working, it's not operating. Um, this right here is a nice way to be able to see power on one leg, but not on another leg. For example, uh, you can use a multimeter, that's fine, and that's actually a great way to do it, and it's probably the best way to do it. Um, but for a quick test, if you open the box up and you want to verify the breaker, for example, we have customers call up and say, you know, it's not working. I want to be able to test this. And I said, well, check the breaker. <laughs> verify that the breaker is bad. And, you know, we're all in the industry, and breakers are pretty reliable, but I have seen them go bad. This is a great way just to be able to tap on each of the legs and verify that there's voltage or not coming out of there. Um, quick easy, audible, and a visual is an LED flashing light that actually indicates to you that there's voltage. So nice product again, very easy, something you use to, for troubleshooting, it's, it's a must. Um, I just threw this in here. Uh, this isn't really a great troubleshooting tool, but this is an amazing stripper. So if there's ever any kind of rework being to be done, uh, this right here, this tool, I've used this tool for years, 10 years now. Um, the same one I bought. Um, I just wanna throw that out there. Um, they did a great job making this tool. Uh, great stripper, great crimper, uh, great cutter. Uh, it's all in one, super comfortable, ergonomic. And um, like I said, I've had it for 10 years, beat it up and it's still just going. So um, this, I use this as well. It's in my bag and I just wanted to bring it up. So, but the drum roll is right here. The best tool in your toolbox today 
is the ECU app. The ECU app, like I said, is an online app, both available in the Apple Store and Google Play Store. This particular device right here is going to give you so much visibility to your system during your installation. Uh, it's crazy. Um, the configuration of the ECU and installation of those serial numbers from the devices that you're installing into the ECU app, clearly super easy. So let's go here, next one. So the ECU app, I said, turns the gateway from a toy to the sharpest tool in your toolbox. And I, and I, and I stand by that 100%. The nice thing is you're making the marriage between your phone, that application, and the gateway. What you're doing, you have all this information now. Now you're gonna be able to see system power, what it's making. You see that it's connected. You'll see serial number of the device, the rev of the device. You'll see how much power it's being made today. You'll see the number of inverters that are installed, how many are talking. And you'll be able to see on the application, you'll be able to see um, if it's installed, if it's communicating, if there's AC applied, and if it's producing power right from the palm of your hand without internet. I wanna make sure that's very clear are gateways. When you're on site and setting the system up, the gateway used to be the thing that you did at the end of the job. You used to go to the job, you get the rails in, put the inverters in, put in the gate, put in the modules, run the electrical down to the box, get everything tidied up, and then power up your gateway. This now, the gateway, is the first thing you do. You get on site, you get that ECUA app out. So you power up the device, get that thing going, scan in all the serial numbers that you're going to install on that job that day. At that point, this device, the ECUR or ECUC, both actually compatible, um, will start communicating to the inverters every five minutes. The way that it works is five minutes. Zero, when you plug that device in at zero, at five minute point, it goes out to the serial numbers that it knows, the ones that you've scanned at eight o'clock in the morning and starts talking. And it's gonna go, are you there? And it's not gonna hear anything. And at 10 minute mark, it's gonna say, are you there? And it's not gonna hear anything. And then, oh, 15 minute mark, oh, you've already installed your first, your first inverter. The way it works is the inverter's on the roof. You plug in your first panel, the first DC connection. Remember, like I said, you're gonna get that red dot and then three blasts of green. Once you've made that first connection, you've now fired up that device. That device, the Zigbee chip inside that device is now energized and talking. Once it's talking, the ECUR or ECUC will go out and say, are you there? Oh, it'll say, hey, you're there, great. And it will record that it's there. It will start building its network um, as you're building the array. All right, so let's get into the networking and connectivity of the inverters to the gateway and then the gateway to the internet. Let's throw the slide up here. So this is right here talking about the differences between power line communication or PLC and Zigbee communication. Now, it, the industry standard was PLC for a long time. We've used it, our competitors use it. Some of our competitors still use it. Um, we have since changed over to Zigbee communication. Uh, we've used Zigbee communication now for six years in our industrial product. Uh, and the reason we switched over to Zigbee six years ago was because the YC-1000 is used in a, typically in a, used in a commercial environment, which is very, very noisy power lines. Uh, trying to communicate anything over a power line in a noisy environment uh, is very difficult and challenging. I'm sure many of you out there have uh, experienced trying to find good, clean power signals to get your communications and get become very frustrated. With power line communication, uh, it works. But what we found was in 2014, NEC required arc fault breakers in all bedrooms. That was, that was the code. And where do people put their offices? People put their offices in a bedroom that it's not, they're not using. Now protected by or behind an arc fault breaker. 2017, NEC made it even worse by saying, now I want the, I want the breakers, I want, I want the, uh, all the bedrooms and living spaces protected by an arc fault breaker. And you cannot pass a signal, PLC signal through an arc fault breaker. So we decided to go forward with Zigbee. Zigbee, for all of the obvious reasons, it's a wireless communication protocol. Uh, it's an amazing product because it's broadband speeds. Very, very similar uh, to Wi-Fi. I like to consider it kind of a industrial Wi-Fi. The nice thing about this is with your standard Wi-Fi in your home, it's what we call point to peer. 
So the point being the router, peer being your device, your phone, your, your laptop, whatever, your Roku box, whatever you want to call it. With Zigbee, it adds the extra element of a peer-to-peer -peer communication. Meaning, you look on here to the right, the star. So the dot, the black dot is the router and all the little white dots around it are all your devices, your Roku box, your, your, your Game Boy, your whatever, whatever all the different devices, your phone, your computer. If you jump over to the right side, it's a Zigbee diagram. And Zigbee, as you see right here on the bottom, IEEE 802.11 is what we use in our homes or businesses for our internet connections on the Wi-Fi. 802.15.4 is Zigbee. Zigbee adds, like I said, that extra element of that peer-to-peer -peer communication. So you're creating a, a mesh network, if you will. Uh, as you see, one inverter is talking to another inverter, then talks back to the ECU gateway or router, however you want to call it. Very, very nice being able to do that. So we, we are able to actually talk to different inverters through other inverters, improving the communication. So as far as that's concerned, that's the communication from the ECU to the inverters. Now let's talk about the internet connectivity. This is also a big issue, right? I, I know many of you have gone out and rolled trucks for internet connectivity issues, not issues. And customers call and say, hey, uh, my system's not working. You know the system's working just fine. It's producing power, but for whatever reason, the internet is not connected anymore. Many cases, customers are using Wi-Fi to connect the internet to the gateway. And Wi-Fi is a great product. And we all use it in our homes and businesses, but it is not the most reliable thing to have on 24 seven, 365 days a year. So, you know, we're, we're actually solar people, right? We're not, we're not IT people. So what's, what's really, really important here is to be able to provide customers with information. They wanna be able to see their systems in real time, um, have that reliability. And like I said before, we always talk about reliability of the modules. What's the, what's the reliability of that module? How, what's the warranty? What's the reliability of those inverters? You know, and like I said, we, the one thing that we don't cover and it's part of the package that we're selling to our customers is this internet connectivity, this connection between this gateway and the online portal, which they're all looking at. Um, so it's very, very, very important to be able to provide a solid connection there uh, because I always say a joke, your, your, best, your best salesperson is a happy customer. Uh, nothing you don't, the last thing you want is the customer to be out in the field at a dinner party with their friends, uh, pulling up their app and the system's not communicating. That's, that's really bad. So one thing I always recommend, and I, I, you, if you've come to any of these classes, I always metric recommend a internet, uh, ethernet cable connectivity. Um, AP Systems has made it super easy for you to do this because with the advent of the ECUR and the Zigbee technology communicating to the roof, you are now able to take that gateway and put that gateway right in the customer's office, plugged in directly via ethernet cable to their router. What we find is if, uh, if let's say for example, customers are using AT&T service today and they switch over to Comcast. If there's four things plugged into the back of the router, likelihood is they're gonna put four things back into the new router. If you have Wi-Fi connectivity, you obviously, the Wi-Fi name's gonna change, Wi-Fi password's gonna change. You're gonna get a phone call to go out and fix a solar system. that has nothing to do with solar. It has everything to do with internet connectivity. So I can't stress enough. Uh, one of the things that I love about this new product, the ECUR, well, it's not new anymore, two years old now, but um, being able to connect the ECU directly to the customer's router and connect wirelessly the USB to the roof has reduced my call volume on the tech support lines by 50%. That's huge, that's huge. So that, I'm gonna pass that forward to you guys as well to be able to say to, for troubleshooting, let's, let's just get rid of the problem. Let's get rid of the Wi-Fi, do a hard line connection. If you can, I totally understand there are times when you cannot. So nonetheless, uh, reliability uh, is everything. Again, this is just talking about the differences. Uh, one thing I do wanna point out, the only limitation that I can see uh, with using a cable um, is the 100 meter length limitation. This right here, so let's say for example, you have ground mounts, you have different buildings, things like that. The, the line itself has a 100 meter or about 300 feet limitation. Other than that, it's, it's the fastest, it's the most secure, safe. And again, this is, I like to call it truck roll prevention. 
Should you have a situation where you have an outbuilding, let's say you have a house with the internet and you have a barn in the back with, uh, without internet and that's where everything is at. We wanna maximize that. We wanna be able to get the internet out to that device. Um, if it's over 100 meters, you know, you, we already know the cable's not gonna work. This right here, point-to-point -to -point ethernet, this is actually over TDMA technology, basically cell phone technology. This is a point-to-point, -point, uh, back and forth over radio frequency, ethernet over, over radio. Uh, a little bit more expensive, but it gets the job done and it gets it done reliably. So you're gonna take one of these devices and you're gonna plug it in inside the house at the router. And the second device is gonna be at the array, the ground mounts, the barn, the outshed, the other building, whatever. Uh, super great device. The nice thing about this is you can see distances, you know, 300 meters. This is the three kilometers right here. This is actually pretty amazing. And this is for this device. They, they make them go even further. So you have different, you have the abilities to go large distances uh, and still be able to communicate uh, over the internet. And all of this leads up to what we call our online portal or our EMA. Um, so all the information, all the, the reliability between the connection between the inverters and the gateway, the gateway to the internet, all leads to the EMA. And having this EMA is so powerful because this is so much information right at your fingertips, either on your mobile phone or on your computer. And the computer version actually is even better because it's just so much information. Uh, and we'll talk more about that at the end. We'll do a live demo and show you where some of this information is uh, available to you. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that the, the information is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, wherever you are in the world, you can log into your, through your account and be able to see it. Again, both the computer and the app version. And you're getting down to the module level monitoring. And this is really where the power of all of this comes together. For example, I had a customer just recently. This is actually at a show. Uh, we were at Intersolar in San Diego. Sauer comes up to me and says, hey, I uh, just wanted to chat with you. I apologize, but I just uh, I got an issue at one of our sites and it looks like we got a, a failed inverter. And I said, well, that's, that's interesting. Let's, let's, let's take a look. So we were able to actually log on to the, our online portal, to our EMA, and take a look. And so using the online tools that we had available, I was actually able to see that the DC input that he was talking about for that particular module was low. And it was legitimately low. Uh, but what was interesting was it was, it was two thirds the adjacent modules on the roof, which kind of clued me in a little bit. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, when it comes to DC, AP Systems does not create any DC. We don't make the DC. The DC comes from the solar panel itself. That is a really important takeaway here. I want to make sure that's super clear. Um, we only convert what we get. And if we only get certain voltages, we're not able to convert because it doesn't meet the requirements. So looking at the online tools, I was able to demonstrate to the customer that a bypass diode was activated. And if you look down here on the bottom, you can see this is a little bit of an eye screenshot, but you can see the top one. This, this, is, this green one here is one of the adjacent modules. This is the, the channel one. The channel down below is channel two. And you can see that it's sitting in right around 24 volts, 20, 22, 22 volts. The other one here is 31, 32 volts. Um, the customer then, like I said, took the screenshot below, sent it to the manufacturer, and the manufacturer sent the replacement module. Uh, module was replaced on the roof and the system was working perfectly. It wasn't an inverter issue, but the nice thing about the system is the inverters are communicating to the ECU. The ECU then communicates to the online portal and then all this information is available to you right from your fingertips, right from your home without even rolling a truck. Truck roll prevention is really what we're trying to do here. We want to be able to solve problems remotely. So the, again, that's, that's so, so important to have that reliable internet connection at that site, be able to see all this information, um, be able to make logical decisions um, and, and close these things out without even rolling a truck, wasting time, wasting money, getting on roofs, lifting panels. It's a lot of extra work when this customer, I mean, just they were at the show, so it was great, it was perfect, um, but they made an assumption based on what they, what they saw, but we were able to show them uh, what the issue really was. Uh, so that's really the power of module level monitoring uh, and being able to see this kind of detail.
I really like to, to add on to what Chris was saying there. Um, we The vast majority of the cases that, that we see in, in our tech support group really fall into that, that third bucket. So you have, you know, the first bucket being issues with the microinverter, second bucket being issues with the ECU, uh, the, the third bucket being something else going on with the site. And um, in fact, we've we've done truck rolls ourselves. You know, important clients. You know, we've flown somebody down to, to actually go check on a uh, you know a 500 kilowatt site, and and found that uh, every single one of the instances that they were that they were seeing were were things that were happening uh, on site, and they could have really used this tool to uh, uh, to not only you know prevent some of those uh, those truck rolls out to the site. Uh, some of that consternation, but uh, but also to to solve the problem, and uh, and it really is your your best friend. So you know, before uh, taking a look at um, you know uh, jumping in the truck and, and and going to the site, really yeah, consider using that uh, that online tool to be able to troubleshoot. Thank you. So in regards to troubleshooting, this this is actually one of the key things. So like I said, having that multimeter, having that current checker. Being able to check the module itself. So this installer, like I said, you know, I saw the data. He was actually pretty pleased with what he saw. Uh, but as a as a check, I asked him. I said, "Well, when you do take it off, what's this? When you lift that panel up, do me this favor. You know, take a look at the solar module uh, label on the back. That the basically the nameplate rating." And I said, "Well, tell me what the VOC is." And I said, "Oh, the VOC in this particular case uh, is, is you know 44.4. Great." So put this, put this module in the sun. Now voltage, as we all know, voltage comes up pretty quick. It's current that actually this changes by the, by the irradiance of the sun. So voltage, I said, well, put your multimeter on there and tell me what the DC voltage is. And sure enough, he's right in the 44.4 range. Boom, just immediately. He says, oh, well, that's interesting. The voltage is right. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the voltage in this case wasn't, wasn't right. It was actually lower because one of the, one of the, the diodes was activated. Um, the second test you can do and so this is for true for any solar panel. So if, let's say you have a known good solar panel. It should read 44.4 in the, in the full sun. And then your ISC will actually show um, whatever the nameplate rating is here. Again, that depends on the intensity of the sun. If the intensity of the sun will change the current. The voltage will come up almost immediately. But in this particular case, this is not the exact example that he had, but so 44, divide that by three, two thirds, boom, that's your number uh, that he would have received. On his uh, when he was troubleshooting, this is a great check that anybody can do, right there on the roof. Um, I'm just unplugging those two leads, connecting uh, just so basically open open circuit for the two leads, connecting the two leads together and doing a current check. Chris, thanks, Chris. Um, I'd love to cover some of these additional AP systems resources that uh, that you have available to you. Um, and they're all a part of, of learning more about the, the AP systems uh, products and, and how to install them and, uh, and how best to uh, uh, contact AP systems. So the first part is the support page that walks you through a little bit of our or one, two, three, the training, the registration and the installation. Uh, also on that main support page, is uh, there's a form right in that page for you to directly contact our technical support team for any questions or issues. And you'll immediately receive in your email uh, a case number and somebody on our team will be following up on that. The training page has uh, helpful videos, uh, just like our, our YouTube channel. And uh, our registration page is a place where you would go to request your installer account if you don't already have one. Uh, that way you'd be able to set up your AP systems account to be able to manage and monitor your homeowner accounts. We also have our product document, documentation library, which has all of our data sheets, our product manuals, and all of our uh, necessary certifications that you might need. And uh, we have another great resource. Uh, it's our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash AP systems solar. Uh, we have some great videos on there. We also live stream some webinars on there, like this one right now is currently being live streamed on, on YouTube. And uh, we just uh, launched some great, uh, some great videos um, 
one of them in particular answers a lot of questions on the QS1 and YC600 being those being used in tandem on the same circuit and how to cable that. Uh, you see on the screenshot here, the YC600 and QS1 installation video, it's about 25 minutes. Uh, same with the ECUR installation training video, uh, 25 minutes. And I um, encourage you to share those with anyone on your team. Um, because uh, yeah, just missing you know one step could mean the difference between uh, a, a truck roll and not. So uh, I encourage you to to share those with your your team members who install AP systems so that they can become more familiar. All right, thanks, Jason. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So in in regards to best practices, let's just kind of review some of the things we talked about. Uh, the ECU app. Here we go. ECU app. This this like I said, I kind of emphasize this a bit. It's a tool, not a toy uh, anymore. Uh, I want to say anymore because in the past, and I've done it myself, ECU was a thing I did at the end. It's like, well, let's, that's, that's the thing I get out of the truck. It's like, where is that thing? Let's set it up now. Let's get this thing going. Um, you want to be doing this at seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning, whenever you show up on site, um, you want to be able to get that thing turned on, load the serial numbers, uh, even if you don't have any inverters on the roof at that time. The nice thing about that is as you're building your array, um, they're gonna come online and start building that Zigbee network. It's gonna start building. So you're not doing it all at the end of the day. You're not putting on 20 inverters all at once. Every inverter is coming on separately and building the array. So by the end of the day, you're gonna be able to take that ECU app, be able to look at your screen and verify that you've installed the serial numbers into the ECU properly, that they all have good DC connections, that AC has been applied if you get that far during the day. One thing I also want to point out, and I don't think I did a good job of that, was you don't need AC the first day of installation. You can actually verify that you've got good communication and good DC connections right there on the app. If you go back the next day to do the AC, that's fine. Um, but if, what's nice about it is during that day, without internet, you're going to be able to see that you've got communication all the way from the, from the ECU all the way to the roof, and you're building that, that Zigbee network. Can't emphasize enough, scan the serial numbers. Inside the ECU app, we give you the ability to use a, the camera on your phones, both iOS and Android. It's amazing. Click, 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 zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, and the nice thing about it, it won't let you scan the serial numbers twice. So if you think you missed one, you can go back over your entire map and do it. You can go on the outside of the box. So when you receive our product, the outside of the box also has the serial numbers that are inside of that box. You don't even need to open the box if you don't want to. Um, you can carry the box to the roof. Um, like I said, the key thing is get the ECU turned on, load those serial numbers, and walk away. Let that thing do its thing. And as like I said, as you're building the array, you'll start creating that network. ECU placement. Because of Zigbee, we can do up to 100 meters away. So again, I can't emphasize enough. If you have the ability to put it in the customer's office plug into their router we do include an ethernet cable in the box for easy placement easy plug-in there's an antenna external antenna that goes to the roof for zigbee and again like i said it's 100 meters uh, of distance 300 feet is line of sight think of zigbee again as wi-fi how far can you walk away before you lose your wi-fi signal how far can you walk away before you lose the zigbee signal they both communicate at 2.4 gigahertz exact same frequency, exact same distance. Uh, so for most residential uh, issue, uh, houses, not an issue whatsoever. Uh, if it's being used in a commercial environment, we also have extended antennas that can reach outside, maybe even reach the roof if needed. Again, create an accurate inverter module map online. This right here is gonna help you for future service. And understanding where the inverters are and understanding where the modules are is critical. Um, and it's nice, actually, because you would be able to actually see um, the, the sun come up and sun go down on the modules as they are placed on the roof. Again, accurate inverter maps are so critical. It's so nice to have that. Um, connection to the Internet. I, I, I stand on my soapbox again. Ethernet is amazing. Um, it's rock solid. It's safe. It's fast. And it's reliable. That's the thing. Is the last thing I want you guys to do is rolling trucks for Ethernet, for, for Internet connections. Um, AC end caps and dust caps. Um, I, I've seen many installations where the AC end cap is not installed. Uh, if you just have open, open live wires on the roof, not a great choice, but AC end caps, do it. DC caps, same thing. Let's say you have an odd number of modules 
Uh, they're just regular old MC4 uh, dust rubber caps. Just cap them off. What we don't want is water getting in there, dust getting in there, any kind of issues there. And the last thing, um, and I will show this, we'll demonstrate this in a moment here. Online on the EMA, we have the ability to add files, pictures, any permit documentation, electrical drawings, sticker maps, anything that you have done on that site, you can put this into the online portal. You just click and upload this information and it's there for you to have. So the nice thing about this is you don't need to have a manila folder with Mrs. Smith's job anymore. You can still have it if you'd like, but you can also have it online. The nice thing about that is if you ever need to go back and reference that site, you'll be able to see the pictures that you took. You'll be able to see all the documentation for that. It's all available to you and not the homeowner. And I'll show you exactly where that is in the next uh, little demo here. Okay. So I'm going to take a few moments here, um, set up or change the, uh, the view to get to the online portal. But what we're going to cover, Jason, you can kind of help jump in here a little bit, but we're going to basically cover inverter links configuration. This is like linking or marrying the inverters to the ECU, to the gateway. We're going to talk about grid profile settings. These are the kind of things that you can change. We talked about this earlier with 600 and QS1. So let's say you use that in a commercial environment. You're going to have to change the grid profile to meet the requirements for 208. Let's say you live in California. You're in Rule 21 country. You need to change the grid profile. I'll show you where to do that. Um, settings list to verify. This right here will tell you that you've sent the command. You've actually seen that it was sent and see that it was received. Um, we have a diagnose tab. And, an intelligent diagnose tab. This is going to give you a little bit more tips and tricks to figure out if there's any issues on the site. It's going to show up in these little windows to be able to give you some information to help troubleshoot. Uh, then we're going to dig in a little bit deeper into the user registration, the pieces there, the, the, the parts, module mapping, again, so critical. Installation drawing, we just talked about. And there's a brand new, there's a brand new feature we just added about three weeks ago. It's called device replace. Let's say you need to change out an ECU for some reason, you have a failure. Boom, we can change it out quickly. An inverter. The nice thing about this product is it actually gives you the ability to type in with the old and the new, hit the return, and you're done. It makes automatically makes all the marriages in the online portal. It remaps everything onto your map, uh, replaces the old with the new, uh, really slick. So hold on one second while I switch over. Be right back with you. So I want to mention a couple of uh, important things. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, the EMA and uh, and some of the basics there, I highly encourage you to check out video, I believe it's video five of our ECU, uh, ECUR installation series that kind of walks through, uh, you know, after you've set up the ECU, how to do the finish uh, up, uh, you know, registration, setting up the homeowner account in the EMA. So video five of that series is available on our YouTube channel. Um, and so what you would typically do when you first hit this, uh, your, your installer account is you would first do that initial user registration. And um, uh, once you set up that, that homeowner's account and you, you put their information in there uh, and you connect it to the ECU, a lot of these tools that, uh, that Chris is mentioning will then become available to you. Great. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, we can see it. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna log in as an installer here. So I'm just gonna show you some of the key features, key troubleshooting pieces that we provide for you to troubleshoot your system. So this right here is one of our test accounts that we use. Um, it's located in San Diego, California. And what I, what I wanna point out here is the system status right here. This right here, um, we have four different lights that will show up on this particular side. This is the visual indicator for you. Installer. When you're looking at this particular view here, this will be your fleet view, if you will, your dashboard, your splashboard. Um, we have green, which obviously is means good and everything is fine and working just great. Uh, we have yellow, uh, which as you would guess, it's cautionary. There's something going on. Uh, maybe you need to take a little deeper dive to find out what's going on. It could be that maybe one module is not performing as well as another module. There could be shade on one. There could be, there could be a Frisbee up there. It could be something, but at the end of the day, it just, it just throws a little caution and says, oh, there's something wrong, but you might want to take a look. Uh, there's red, uh, and obviously that would be bad or negative. Uh, it could be the module is completely dead. It could be an inverter is not completely working. Uh, it also could be internet connectivity has been lost. Um, so obviously that, that's kind of the priority. Uh, we also add a fourth dot, a fourth color, uh, which is kind of a gray or black dot. 
uh, what we do uh, is give you the ability to select that dot. And what I mean is, like for example, let's say you do an installation um, at Mrs. Smith's house. And Mrs. Smith does not have internet, has no interest in ever having the internet, and this thing will never be connected to the internet. I don't want you to log in every day to this system or every week or whatever frequency uh, and see a red dot for Mrs. Smith and go, oh, my God, we've got a problem at Mrs. Smith's house. And then, oh, that's right, Mrs. Smith doesn't have internet. Uh, this gives you the ability to filter those kind of customers, those kind of sites out uh, where you can just kind of visually ignore the black dots. You know, obviously address the reds, look at the yellows, and, and just ignore the greens as well because everything's just fine. So that's that's one of the first signs, the first visual indicators of everything is healthy. Let's dig in a little bit. So we talked about inverter links configuration. This right here um, is located underneath the remote control section. If you come under here to ECU settings, the linking, as we mentioned, come down here, inverter links configuration. The linking will actually show you right here. This will show you that this is the serial number or the gateway serial number for this particular site. And this will do the inverter serial numbers here. This will actually show you that all of these inverters have been linked. And again, the linking is nothing more than making that marriage between that inverter and that ECU or that gateway. Once that link has been made, it knows that inverter, I'm sorry, that ECU knows to communicate directly to that device. Uh, that is the link right there. If you come into this section and things are not linked, let's say there's a dash, let's say there's no link, uh, this is where you'd actually be able to come in and actually click on. So let's say, for example, this one ending in 997 wasn't linked properly. It had no nothing here. You could actually come up here and I could say add. I could say select from the list below and I could hit send. And this sending right here, I'm gonna do it. I've just sent the command, a link command to that device. If you see where I'm at here, I'm under remote control, under ECU setting. I'm gonna go down here to settings list. Under settings list, you can see right here, inverter links configuration. I just sent this command from my computer to the online portal. So the online portal has received it. So it gives you a timestamp of when that was sent and the online portal has received it. What I'm waiting for now, and this will take anywhere from zero to 15 minutes, is to receive a reply from the ECU. And the reason it takes that long is because, as we talked about a little bit, the poll cycles, we have 20 poll cycles per hour. Every five minutes, this ECU or gateway will go out to the inverters and ask their configuration, ask them questions. And every 15 minutes, it will push up to the cloud. So what I'm waiting for right now is this device, the cloud, I mean, the ECU to go up to the cloud and see if it has mail. It's gonna say, here's my information that I'm delivering to the cloud. Do I have mail? Oh, I do. It will then take it down and suck it down and execute it on that site. At that point, I'm gonna get a reply time that the ECU has gone up, it's received, opened up its mailbox, received it and brought it down to the ECU and executed it. This is just a good visual indicator for you to know that you sent the command, you sent that you know what time you sent it, and then you'll see what time it was received. This is also a good way to verify remotely uh, whether you have internet on that site or not. Because uh, if you have internet, we'll be, we'll, we will get a reply time. Moving on to grid profile. This is the next. So again, I'm still under remote control section. I'm moving into the grid profile section here. This right here is gonna give you the ability to change the grid profiles and all the parameters. And you can see down here, this is, this is, this is a different case. This is a, a older product, a 500. This is where you'd actually be able to type in and see the serial numbers. And I'll, I'll actually show you a different site that actually shows the grid profiles that you can actually select. So for our, two, for our 1000, for our 600 and QS1, it's actually a drop down menu uh, to be able to see that. Under diagnose, this is actually a place to see here. You, if there's any kind of issues on the site, you can come into this diagnose section here. This diagnose section will give you a little bit of information about the site. It will talk about the date uh, that you're looking at. You can actually go back in time. And then over here is what you're gonna get is your report. This report is gonna show that everything is doing just fine. It's working just fine. How much energy it's made for the day. And you can go to the second page and see more. And here it is. So if there is any issues, you'll see it here. 
Uh, if there is any issues there, you can come down to intelligent diagnostic and you could be able to see all the details and little bit of information of what we suggest you do to resolve the issue that you see. Uh, in this particular case, you get the green smiley face and the system is functioning normally. Everything is good. All right, so let's jump down to user registration. One thing I wanna talk about here is inverter configuration. So under inverter configuration, let's say you had a inverter that needed to be replaced, changed. You could come down here and replace it. Uh, we've also just added this right here, device replace. Instead of coming into inverter configuration and doing it the manual way, we've now added this thing called device replace. So those of you that have done this before, it's super simple now. You're actually able to come in here. You're actually able to look, put an ECU number in here, set query, it's gonna find it. It's gonna ask you what, what number you're replacing it with. Click return and you're done. Again, so that's, that's gonna automatically link the device. It's gonna add the device, it's gonna link the device and it's gonna remap that device. Um, everything's done for you, uh, one-stop shop. Coming back to the view configuration, <laughs> this is the mapping. So under mapping, you see the ECU number, this is right here. I'm gonna go over here to edit under action. I'm gonna to go to detailed. Under detailed, this is where I'm able to, to map the array as it is on the roof. So for example, um, I could take this device right here and I say, oh, that's not actually not in landscape mode, it's in portrait mode. So I'm gonna change the orientation to portrait. I'm gonna change this one to portrait. I'm gonna change this one to portrait. I'm gonna slide that over and put it in line with the others. And I'm gonna hit save. I can come back over here to module and now see what I've done. And I can see the modules. While I'm here, I wanna just talk about something very quickly in regards to the module performance. As an installer, you're able to see the module performance. You're actually able to see performance throughout the day. Uh, like again, this is recorded every five minutes and pushed every 15. So let's just pick a module at random. I'm just gonna pick this one here. Come down here to detail. This detail right here is gold. Uh, again, this is the truck roll prevention that we were talking about earlier. Clicking on detail, coming in here, I'm actually able to see the, the DC volts, the DC current, and I'm actually seeing the power up on this module every five minutes throughout the day. Nice thing is I can go back in time. I can go back to yesterday and see what I got. Here's yesterday. Here's the performance of yesterday's at that site. I can see this for the channel B. I can see it for channel A. The nice thing is I can also see AC for the site. I can see right here that the voltage is 239 volts, 60 Hertz, and you can see the temperature rising. You can see throughout the morning, the morning starts at 18 C, and by midday here, we're already at 60 C, 59 C. All this information is coming in every five minutes from that site. So if there is any kind of issue on that site, if there's an AC issue, you'll be able to diagnose it right here. If there's a DC issue, you'll be able to diagnose that right here as well. Very, very nice to be able to see all this information in one spot. It's also nice is you're actually able to see how much energy this device is made at every hour of the day. You're actually able to see daily energy in the last 30 days, how much this device is made. So you can see the consistency. If you see drop-offs, you see things like this, it could be weather related. You can actually see monthly energy this year. How much is this thing made? This one panel now. We're looking at only we're only looking at channel A, just one module one channel of this inverter throughout the year. You can also look at yearly energy and lifetime. How much is this one panel made throughout its lifetime since the system was installed? All that information is available to you. The other nice feature that we have, and this is great for troubleshooting as well, is what we call the compare. This right here gives you the ability to compare two different modules, two different channels. As you can see right here, we're comparing the same inverter ending, ending in 216 and 216, channel A and channel B. Now these, these two modules are adjacent to each other on the roof. Of course, 
Now they did shoot track fairly similarly, but they're different because there's different shading patterns on every single module on this roof. Again, this is our test roof. But you can see down here, you're actually able to see all the data from these two different inverters all the way throughout the day. But let's say I had interest in, I, let's say I didn't care about the current. So I'm, I can turn off the current from both devices. So you can come down here and click on these real radio bars. Let's say I wanted to look at, I don't care about power. I want to look at voltages. This is the voltage that I'm receiving from each one of these panels throughout the day. So I'm actually able to see DC voltage. Like the example that I made earlier, I was clearly able to see that one was running at 32, 33 volts. The next one was running over 22 volts. Uh, clearly being able to see that difference in that bypass diode that was out and not, I'm not operating properly. Again, a great way to troubleshoot something remotely from your chair and never leaving, never leaving your office. Uh, and if you do need to leave the office for any reason, if you do need to roll a truck, at least you're now armed with information. This information is readily available um, and incredibly powerful. Uh, the other nice thing is we're able to actually monitor and, and compare other devices. Let's say I want to compare two different inverters, the channel A's and channel B's. I can do that as well. I can select whatever I want to look at anytime during the day, and I can go back in time as well. Let's say I want to look at May uh, 19th, 2019. I click on 2019. I click on May 19th, and here it is. So historical data is there as well. And the nice thing about AP systems, we do not truncate any of the data. All the data for the site um, is available um, on the site forever. Um, summary reports, the, everything, is, everything is there from the day this thing was turned on. If you look down below here, you're actually able to make comparisons throughout the years, throughout the months. This, this, this system was turned on in March of 2015. As you can see, it's, 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 all the data is here, but we also have a graphical representation of that same information. So I'm gonna turn off 2015 and 2020 is only a partial year as well. So I'm gonna turn that off. You can actually see tracking for the entire site and then all the data as you see is down here. To see the data throughout the years. So 2015 to 2020, no data is lost. Everything's available to you and you can make comparisons and you can share this information with your customers and they actually do get this view as well. I know we're running a little bit over time here so I'm just gonna to go to one more thing that I wanna just mention to everybody. As far as troubleshooting is concerned, one thing that is really helpful to myself and the team and yourself as well, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, was having information uploaded in the system. We give you the ability under the user registration section, under where it says installation drawing. Here you're able to actually upload drawings, photos, documents, whatever you want uh, to put it into the list here. So for example, um, if you uh, put this in solve, let's, let's say this customer, this installer put this in five years ago, you know, I'm sure that he doesn't remember what he did or what, how it looked. Uh, here you can go click on view and say, ah, okay, that's, that's the Thomas residence. That's right. That's what it looked like. It was a rooftop with parapet walls and all kinds of trees. And that's, that's, that's important. Well, let's see what else we got here. We got the one line drawing. I can come in here and see the sketches, all the drawings, all your, all your CAD drawings, any kind of permits, um, module maps, uh, sticker maps, all that information could be uploaded, scanned and uploaded and saved here for infamy. Uh, the nice thing about this is you'll be able to see it. And I, I gotta be honest with you, when, when you guys call for support, that's the first place I go look and see if we guys uploaded anything. That is critical. It's so nice to be able to see what was done on that site, how it was arranged electrically, you know, what's, what connected, what's connected to what. Uh, this, is, this is so critical. So having this information, giving you the ability to put this up here um, is, is really nice. Um, I said, I, I encourage you, everyone to use it because it's gonna help for future troubleshooting for you and for us. Okay, so thanks, Chris. Uh, that was uh, very, very helpful. Um, we'd like to go over some Q&A now and address some of the questions that we received. Um, Let's see, the first one uh, that we're going to cover is if, uh, if you replace an ECU, does, the, uh, does the, the EMA automatically reload the inverter serial numbers in the new device? Uh, yes, absolutely does. So as long as you use the replace function, that, that, that's very, very critical. 
so if you change it or delete it, then that information goes away. Uh, but doing, doing the replace, all you're doing is just saying, okay, we started with serial number one, two, three, and we're continuing with serial number four, five, six. So using that replace function is, is critical in that particular feature. And yes, it will automatically do all the linking and, and remapping for you. Okay, and someone had asked um, regarding the, the setup of the ECU, uh, if they can scan all the codes in the in the office before mobilizing, and that's that's a big yes. Uh, like Chris was saying, you just plug in that uh, that ECU at the office, you can actually connect all those before you even before you even get to the site. It's a pre-configuration if if you want to have that plug and play at the site, but again, on site, as Chris was saying, using the ECU app to be able to verify that those microinverters are talking and, uh, and uh, ready to produce energy. Uh, that's the critical part. Absolutely, good question. I have a question coming in here. It says, uh, can I import or export data from the EMA to Excel or other, any, any other kind of software? Absolutely. So the EMA allows you to uh, download it as a PNG file, a picture file, uh, allows it as a PDF, or um, a CSV file. So I guess it would, that would work for Excel. I have another question coming in here. I have a Klein uh, clamp amp meter that reads different than currents than my fluke meter. Uh, what do you do to calibrate your gear? Oh, actually, great question. So we actually have an external service that actually calibrates all of our test equipment. Um, so we send it out once a year, we get the sticker on it. Um, I don't have the name of the company readily available, but I could uh, look at for that. We'll save that question and get you that information. Another question coming in here. Uh, question about the ECUC and ECUR. Let me go back to a slide here. We're just gonna talk about that real quick. See if I can get there. That'd be a better way to do this. Okay, here we go. So ECUR and ECUC. So ECUR uh, was originally intended for residential, and hence the R. The ECUC was originally intended for commercial, hence the C. But what we're trying to do here, this, these two devices right here, the biggest difference is the ECUR is your, like I said, very basic monitoring gateway. This is going to be able to communicate directly to the inverters on the roof, provide information to this ECU, and then back up to the internet. The ECUC adds a bunch of different advanced functions, including current transformers, including relay control. Um, there's, there's things we, we can actually use this in a three phase environment and be able to monitor all three, all three lines of voltage, the current transformers for production and consumption uh, for use in places where say, for example, you can't put anything back on the grid, like a zero export situation. We're able to monitor the consumption of the home or business. We're actually able to monitor the, the complete uh, array as well for your production, make those comparisons and kind of curtail production on the roof to meet the demand of the home without exporting any data to, I'm exporting electricity to the grid. So basically you're a lot more advanced functions. So Chris, I have a question that's, uh, that was actually put in the chat which is about, um, I, I think you address this, but um, the inverters communicate with the, the ECU even though there's no uh, AC grid connection during ah, the- Yeah, uh, great, great question. So yeah, so that's the, that's the power of this system right here is we're able to actually go through the process, turn the ECU on, the inverters themselves will turn on with that first solar panel plugged in. They'll start to communicate. They won't produce any power without AC, of course, but they will communicate. So you'll have a, a visual indicator that you've got a, you know, when you make that first connection, that red dot followed by three grains, you'll see that on the roof. And then in your ECU app, you'll be able to see that there, there's communication between the ECU and the inverters. Uh, all of that happens without internet, all of that happens without AC. So the nice thing is you can have staged installation. You can have, let's say the, the rails go in, the inverters go in, modules go in, and then the next day you go back and put the AC. Uh, that's fine. Uh, the nice thing is, the people that are on the roof are gonna know they've made good connections. 
um, take a screenshot of their phone and give it to their boss. That's kind of their report card for the day, if you will. All without internet. Another question here. Um, what is the best computer app to use in the field to help with setup and troubleshooting? And that's that's the ECU app. So you just go into your app store on your smartphone and type in uh, ECU uh, app and look for the familiar AP systems icon. And that's the uh, that's the app that you should download. If you see EMA app, that really is uh, is typically just used for the homeowner to view their power production on their smartphone. So that's not helpful in, in setting up. So look for the ECU app, not the EMA app. I have another question coming in here. Uh, in the mountain regions, is it recommended to install Ethernet as part of your install? Um, I, I recommend Ethernet no matter where it's installed. Uh, again, I can't stress enough uh, the reliability. Like I said, the last thing I want you guys doing is rolling trucks to fix internet connections. I, I want you rolling trucks to put in more solar. That, that, that's the bottom line. Uh, and like I said, with the advent of the ECUR, and the use of Zigbee communication, we have literally reduced our phone calls by 50%. Uh, and that's, that's huge. And I, I wanna pay, pay that forward to you guys so you're not getting phone calls about internet connections. Um, like I said, I know it's not always possible. Uh, we do include Wi-Fi in both the ECUR and ECUC for those special cases or corner cases where you can't get an ethernet connection. But nonetheless, ethernet is, is the fastest, most reliable, most secure and uh, well, you just, you just, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and frustration. And again, like I said, it sounds cliche, but it's true. Your, your, your best salesperson is a happy customer. And you, know, you don't want them calling about internet connections. When it's, if it's producing power like crazy, they just can't see it. And that's, that's an issue. There's a question that came in here. Uh, I talked about, I noticed there was a recent update to the ECU app. Are there any new features added? Um, I guess we're not going to running, running out of time on this particular call, but there are quite a few features. There's a signal strength meter. There's, there's all kinds of information that's going to be gleaned from the app itself. Um, please look up on our website, uh, find out when we're doing part two of the installation training. Uh, we go into a deep dive on that particular feature right there and all those features. Uh, I'd love to share more with you about that. I think we have time for one more question, Chris, if you want to. I don't know if you have any more on your side there. Uh, it says, what type of commands can I send to the inverters through the ECU and how can I do it? Uh, very, very simple. So with the ECU app, there's all kinds of commands you can send to the devices. You can send AC parameters to the, to the command to the device. You can do the linking commands. You can actually do the serial numbers, scanning of serial numbers and pushing those down to the ECU all available through the app. Excellent. Yeah, good. Okay, well, thank Thanks you so everyone. Uh, we appreciate your attendance on this, this webinar today. Again, it was uh, recorded. And so we will be sending everyone a link uh, so that you can uh, review the materials as well as uh, view it, uh, view the recording on our YouTube channel if you like. Um, just a reminder that uh, next week we have some more webinars. Um, it's a uh, part one and two of our installation training series. Uh, many of you are uh, familiar with that, but in case you have not yet gone through our installation training, highly encourage you to, to look those up. Uh, you can register at apsystems.com forward slash webinars. Just want to say thank you to everyone, and we hope you have a great week.